Okay, everybody, welcome to the first episode of the Michael Cowan Report. In this uh, report, I'm going to be covering all the important topics that's happened in finance today. And uh, don't worry, I've tested my microphone, so I'm sure my microphone is working. Just type one to confirm that it's sounding good for you guys. Um, we've got lots of news uh, to cover today. And uh, what we're going to be covering is we're going to be going over Ray Dalio's warning that the U.S. is going to have a debt crisis. Bill Ackman uh, believes the 10-year U.S. Treasury and 30-year uh, could go to 5%. Also very interesting what Costco is doing. Uh, they're now selling gold bars and they're selling out within hours. So demand for real physical gold is going through the roof while they're manipulating the paper markets. Not only gold, but Costco is also starting to sell um, some emergency kit items, some emergency food, uh, some preparedness items, and they're selling out uh, in record time. CarMax uh, missed their quarterly profits because the used car market, like I've been warning about, is now starting to tank after things are getting back to normal uh, after COVID. Also, the Federal Reserve um, has had a huge loss and there's mass layoffs happening at the Fed. And Bank of Amer and Bank of America is warning about huge uh, commercial mortgage-backed security losses, which could lead to a financial crisis, just like what we saw in two thousand eight with the residential mortgage-backed security crisis. So, everyone, this is going to be an action-packed episode. I've got so much to cover, so you know what time it is. Let's get into the news, the facts, and the data. All right, look at this. First things first, the first story we're going to go over. Ray Dalio says the U.S. is going to have a debt crisis. So what do you think? Do you think the U.S. is going to have a debt crisis? Go ahead and type uh, 1 if you think uh, it's going to have a debt crisis or type 2 if you think there's going to be no crisis. And I'm just having a look at my message here. Um, all right, fantastic. So look at this. We're going to have a debt crisis in this country, he said. So how fast it transpires, I think it's going to be a function of that supply demand issue. So I'm watching that very closely. Okay. Someone said type 1 diabetes. Okay. It's, uh, caught me off, got off guard there. Yeah, that's a bit funny. Um, so how fast is going to happen? Well, what we're witnessing right now is central banks, they're selling bonds at the same time, other foreign central banks like the Central Bank of Japan will be selling more bonds and China is selling U.S. treasuries in order to uh, go ahead and invest in their economies because their economies are performing very, very poorly. So what he's talking about the supply demand issue is at the same time, all these central banks are selling, the U.S. government is issuing more and more debt. Because look at this. U.S. debt levels surpassed 11 trillion for the first time this month as lawmakers negotiate a U.S. spending bill before October 1 deadline. So a failure to reach an agreement could mean a government shutdown and raise perceived risk of the country's debt. Now, I went over uh, in my report uh, yesterday that uh, Moody's is looking at downgrading the U.S. credit rating. So if this happens, uh, we could see more downgrades and cause interest rates to spike. And look at this. This is absolutely crazy, Ron. So U.S. debt levels have ballooned in recent years, especially after roughly a 50% increase in federal spending uh, between the fiscal 2020-19 and fiscal 2021. So that's right, Ron. 50% increase in spending in just two years. This is absolutely unsustainable and absolutely crazy. So investors fear interest rates may keep rising as the U.S. fiscal situation worsens, hurting the demand for treasuries. Now, this is exactly how the Roman Empire fell, or one of the reasons why they fell, because they started to dilute their gold and silver coins. They started to put other cheaper metals uh, to dilute the value of these coins. And this is what the U.S. government is doing. Yes, they can kick the can down the road, but there's only so long they can do that for. If they keep on doing this, uh, either we'll have a debt crisis or they keep printing money like crazy, the US dollar will keep on losing more and more purchasing power until it becomes worthless. They can't just keep doing this forever, forever, everyone. 
So Dalio is concerned that uh, more headwinds for the economy than just high debt levels, saying growth could fall to zero, give or take one or two percent. Well, I think it could fall negative, but this is what you have to understand. Even if we have one or two percent growth, is it real growth if the only reason why you're getting growth because you're flooding the country uh, with migrants, uh, legal and illegal, and also the price of everything is going up, inflation. So for example, if the economy grows at 2%, but inflation is 5%, or should I say the CP lie inflation, and real inflation is 10%, you're actually going backwards. And that's why people feel like, well, what's going on? I feel like I can't get ahead. I'm getting you know small pay rises, but I feel like everything else is getting much more expensive than my pay is going up. Well, that's what's happening with the whole country. Yes, GDP is growing in nominal terms, but real value is falling. So he says here, his last warning, I think you're going to get a meaningful slowing of the economy. So this is our first uh, story here, everyone. Ray Dalio warns a debt crisis is going to be coming. I think he's absolutely right here. Now, Bill Ackman, he also believes, this is our next story, that the 10-year US Treasury yield could approach 5% soon. We're seeing Treasury yields spike, and it's because of those supply-demand issues like Ray Dalio warned about. Now, this is a very, very big problem for the U.S. government because not only they have record debt of $33 trillion, but also interest rates are at much, much higher levels, okay? They're paying five times the amount of interest than they were paying just four years ago. So it says here, uh, Bill Ackman, the CEO, said he did not believe the Federal Reserve could get inflation back down to its 2% target partly due to a resurgent labor market, uh, labor movement and high energy prices. So that's exactly the right one. We're seeing a lot of strikes happening in the labor market. We're seeing our oil surge. So if you think the Federal Reserve is going to get their, even their CP lie data down to 2%, that's not going to happen for years. And these central banks are doing something very, very bad. They're just continually trying to delay lifting interest rates. They'll say, look, we'll just wait for another month or we'll just wait till this data comes out. Then the data comes out hot. Well, we'll look past this latest report and we'll wait for the next report. They're trying everything they can to buy time because like I've been telling you, they need inflation to erode away the debt. So he says, our view is that we're in a different world. You have a generation of people that are used to rates. Uh, you have you know, for sounding like high interest rates on a historical basis, it's extremely low. So that's exactly right. Well, he's talking about 4%, even 5% interest rates. When you look at a 40 year time frame, it's absolutely nothing. But you have a lot of people that have taken on so much debt when interest rates were zero. And it's not always there for a lot of central banks told people, go out there, take on debt. Interest rates won't go up. Don't worry, we won't lift interest rates for years. In fact, we'll probably have negative interest rates. Well, if people worried about interest rates at 5%, well, that's actually low compared to history. What would happen? Hey, Economic Ninja, how you doing? Um, if you look at, uh, like I said, a historic average, that's low. What would happen if inflation surges like we saw in the 70s and, in fact, we are seeing inflation like the 70s and 80s. It's just that they've manipulated the data. They've changed the way they recorded inflation to make it seem like today's inflation is not as bad as the 70s and 80s. Well, it actually is. So the benchmark 10-year Treasury yield has hit a 15-year high. So it hit a peak of 4.65%. As the Federal Reserve uh, signaled, the interest rates will be higher for longer this month. Now, also, the 30-year is uh, getting even closer. That hit 4.71%. So also, he, he says, buying the 30-year isn't worth it. I agree. I think if you do want to get a bit of interest on your money in the short term, just buy a one, three-month, six-month, uh, and get yourself 5, 5.5% 5 uh, for the short term. Because who know what's going to happen to the US government over 30 years? I think they won't be the world superpower. I can almost guarantee they won't be the world superpower in 30 years. He says, we have an economy that is still strong and inflation at 3.5% or 4% persistent. Well, I think that's what he means. It's going to be persistent 3.5 or 4%. We all know it's much higher. So our view is basically you're not being paid enough to enter a 30-year contract with the government. So that's exactly right. 
to summarize what Bill Ackman said there, uh, 10 year, 30 years going to go to 5% and it's not even worth buying until we get much, much higher yields. <clears throat> But let's go into our next story, something very, very interesting, a new strategy Costco is doing. And uh, this is like what I've been talking about. Demand for physical gold is through the roof as well as silver, um, but they're manipulating the paper market. JP Morgan has been caught time and time again manipulating these markets. So it's not a conspiracy theory, it's a fact. So look at this. Costco is selling gold bars and they're selling out within a few hours. So Costco is selling one ounce uh, gold pamp Swiss Lady Fortuna bars and uh, Costco Chief Financial Officer Richard said that the bars are in hot demand and don't last long when they're in stock. <clears throat> now, even though gold uh, hasn't been performing great recently, that's because the dollar's been going up, gold has risen more than 15% over the past year and is up 55% over the past five years. So it is a fantastic return over the long term. But right now with the dollar going up, we have some headwinds for gold. So he says they're available for bargain price as well. The premiums aren't too bad. Uh, you have to be a member, but apparently they're selling for just shy of $1,900 per ounce, uh, according to Chatter on Reddit. And Spot Gold was most recently at $1,876 an ounce on Wednesday afternoon. It's up a bit more uh, since then. So regardless of the price, gold is selling like hotcakes, um, judging by comments uh, Tuesday from Costco. So again, we can see here there's red hot demand for gold. Speaking on the company's quarterly earnings call, uh, Galanti said the bars are in hot demand and don't last long. He says uh, he's got a couple of calls from people who have seen online that we've been selling one ounce gold bars. He said, yes, but when we load them on the site, they're typically gone within a few hours and it can only get two per person. So obviously, you know, if you're a big bowler millionaire, uh, you're not going to be able to build a huge portfolio. But if you're someone that, you know, has only got $5,000, $10,000, you can start building a gold stack. Um, not telling you to buy this, but this would be an option as well, which is quite interesting uh, what Costco is doing. Now, the membership does cost between around $120 or $60 a year. <clears throat> Now, he also noted that the company seems to have accelerated its offerings of dried food. So Costco is seeing what's happening out there in the US. They know people worried. They know people are starting to prepare. And I, and I urge you to prepare. And other survival goods at a time when worries about future of the future of the country are running high. So the company markets a 150 serving emergency food preparedness kit that could come in handy. You know, just in case uh, gold meshes, you know, just in case they said, and gold meshes with that type of uh, people, that kind of preppers, they like gold as well. So they've gone to say that they've done their market research. They know this demographic and they're starting to hit it well um, with people who want to be living off the land. You know, that's a great option with this high inflationary time. If you can grow your own food, um, if you can be self-sufficient, you can save yourself a lot of money. And it's also good for your mental health and well-being as well, being out there in nature, being out there in the garden. Uh, and also having your own currency, being your own bank, being your own central bank. Um, and people, like I said, this is this is Costco themselves saying this, people are losing faith in the US dollar. He also said, with inflation still elevated, banks under the gun from a regulatory standpoint and looming issues in commercial real estate market, which I'll go over in a moment, the, have, the safe haven aspect of gold and silver should be strong, Rose said. And I completely agree. So we know what the roadmap looks like. This is what they're saying is going to lead to the collapse. Uh, bank failures, commercial loans defaulting at an alarming rate. They don't seem to have a handle on inflation. And that's why they keep raising interest rates, he said. The outlook, uh, the outlook for stability in the market isn't good. And people want a tangible asset that's going to be a safe haven. And that's gold and silver especially with central bank digital currencies, you're not going to be able to hold cash, but at least you'll be able to hold your gold and silver. <clears throat> Just having a bit of a swig there. Still got a bit of a tickle in my throat, sore throat from yesterday being unwell, but uh, the show must go on, everyone. That leads us to our next story. And I have to adjust my articles because every, every page is different. What we've been talking about in the used car market is, you know, it's a huge bubble. Eventually, it would pop, and we're seeing that now. Uh, CarMax, which is a huge used car uh, seller in the US, they've had a huge uh, miss with their quarterly profit. So let's have a look at this story. 
So CarMax misses quarterly profit estimates on slow used vehicle demand. <clears throat> so they say here, um, on Thursday posted a lower than expected quarterly profit hurt by weakening demand for pre-owned vehicles, sending its shares down over 9% in pre-market trade. So it was strong during the pandemic, but has now tapped off those levels as consumers opt for newer models with attractive financing deals. Now, I don't know about you guys, but you shouldn't be financing a vehicle. If you can't pay cash and lending, unless it's, you know, some emergency, just save up a few thousand dollars, 5,000, 10,000, whatever, and try your best to just buy uh, a used car. That's pretty much the worst asset you can buy is a brand new car. As soon as you drive it off the lot, 10%, 15% of its value is gone. And the first five years is when you see the most depreciation. <clears throat> but they're saying they are getting it for the safety technology. Well, you know, a car five years old, it's pretty safe as well. So the cooling demand coupled with inflationary headwinds has caused card retailers such as CarMax and Kavana to take a dent on their profit by selling cars for lower prices than they had acquired them for. That's something <clears throat> I warned about. I said, these uh, car dealers, they brought them at record prices they're going to face huge losses on these cars, and that's what's happening now. So the Richmond, uh, Virginia-based company last year implemented a series of measures to trim costs, including slowing down on car purchases for its inventory, pausing some hiring, and halting share buybacks. So everyone, I think it could be getting close to the bottom for the used car market. Probably have to see what happens with the economy. If we enter an official recession, unemployment rate ticks up. Used car prices will still be falling, uh, but at least we're not seeing the madness. And all, again, this depends on different countries have different car markets, <clears throat> different states, economies are performing better. So just like the real estate, the car market isn't the same everywhere. <clears throat> but this now brings us to our next story. The Federal Reserve is facing huge losses and big layoffs are coming. So look at this, everyone. For the first time in 13 years, the Fed is cutting workers as it books $100 billion in losses. And technically, you know who's going to have to pay for those losses? Well, that's the U.S. Treasury. Because normally, the Federal Reserve makes a profit, and it sends all profits to the Treasury. But right now, central banks around the world, the same thing is happening with uh, the Bank of England, the RBA. <clears throat> They're losing billions and billions of dollars, okay? So at a time when mainstream economists and FOMC are policymakers are betting the farm on soft landing for the U.S. economy, and an unexpectedly hard signal was just issued by none other than the Fed itself. So again, they're saying the labor market is so strong, the Federal Reserve, but on the other hand, they're sacking 300 workers. So it's, the, the central bank announced it would cut 300 people from its payroll this year, a rare reduction in headcount for an organization that has grown steadily since 2010. After all, it takes not a village with its own uh, police force, and then certainly thousands of workers to come up with catastrophically wrong economic forecasts. Now, you may think YouTubers are bad, but even these people that study these full times that have all these PhDs, these degrees, I think they're actually worse than YouTubers. They get calls even worse. Um, and to keep the money printer primed and ready to pump out a few trillion at a moment's notice. Now, if you think they printed money like crazy uh, during 2020, wait till you see what will happen during the next crisis. Every single time they do it, they have to at least double or triple what they printed the last time. So we'll go ahead and have a look here. I'll bring up a chart. And I'll go ahead and move myself here. This is the Fed operating loss. Look at that. Complete collapse in the Federal Reserve's uh, revenue there. So... Let's go ahead and make sure that's right. Yep. So it has booked 100 billion in losses in recent months, and operations that currently involve paying more interest in uh, to banks on reverse deposits at the Fed than the central bank earns from its roughly 7.5 trillion dollar portfolio. <clears throat> so let that sink in. Everyone just had a <clears throat> quick, uh, quick drink there. So they're, loot, they're paying more to the banks. They're, again, these are bailouts. If the banks didn't get this money, they would have all failed. Major banks are in March. So that's that report there. Now this takes us into the last report. If my voice will hold up, I've got to hang in here. I'm pushing for you guys to get this content out. 
So a raft of commercial mortgage uh, bond ratings were slashed, Bank of America says. So this is another thing I've been warning about, the commercial real estate market, and more uh, importantly, the com commercial mortgage-backed securities. So they've just been uh, given huge amounts of downgrades by Fitch. So credit ratings were cut on the highest number of commercial mortgage-backed securities in recent memory last week. So again, people, it is happening now. So the tally of downgrades last week hit 121 tranches from from 40 deals, according to the bank. Many were tied to Fitch Ratings' ongoing review of the commercial mortgage-backed uh, security bond market as ratings company downgraded or warned of underperforming offices, retail locations, and hospitality pro properties or portfolios. So far in September, Bank of America has spotted 188 bond downgrades and just 15 upgrades. So I'll go ahead and bring up another chart here and move myself. Look at this. Big spike uh, in downgrades here. Kind of like what we saw in 2020 when the whole world was shut down. So that just shows you how bad things are. So also, what could lead to a massive liquidation uh, and fire sale is the commercial mortgage-backed security sector has also been pressured by the National Association of Insurance Commission. So these insurance companies that hold these bonds, what's simply going to happen is the uh, NAIC could say, look, these bonds are too risky. You're now required to sell. And this could lead to huge liquidations and lead to other companies and other hedge funds like BlackRock uh, to get liquidated and margin called. So it can potentially result in insurance companies selling in an event that the reclassification results in too significant of a required increase. So further, the increase in pace and severity of bond market downgrades may cause this year's review to be somewhat more putative than last. So everyone, again, debt crisis, very, very likely. Bond market yields are going to rise. If they rise, stocks have to sell off. Is this simply, why would you invest your money in the stock market if bond yields go 5 6 or even the short-term uh, treasuries go to 7%? Okay, record demand for physical gold happening at Costco. Used car market is plunging. Federal Reserve losing billions. And a commercial real estate market is crashing, which could lead to a financial crisis. So what do you guys think about all these? This has been the first episode of the Michael Cam Report. Thanks for watching. You're awesome. I'll see you all in the next video.